God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. All right, so I want to thank the Lord for my safe travels during my birthday and my safe travels back on home. And I just thank the Lord for his blessings and for just keeping me safe. So thanks to the Lord. All right, so today I'll be reading the chapter 7 of the book of Ezekiel. King James Version, expository study notes included. And I'm going to read chapter 7, and then, um, and then, uh, God willing, do another video about something. And, um, so we'll see. But, um, I'll be reading the expository study book, so the notes included. Um, but as always, we ask God in the mighty name of Jesus. For the revelation of this word and for it to be hid in our hearts. Jesus is desperately needed in all of our lives. That's an understatement. He is. I What words could I use on how much we need Jesus in our lives 24 hours a day? All right. Verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, also you, son of man, thus says the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, the end has come upon four corners of the land. The end of the pleadings through Jeremiah and Ezekiel for Judah and Jerusalem to repent have come. They have refused to repent, and therefore the judgment will fall. Now is the end come upon you, and you will send my anger upon you, and will judge you according to your ways, and will, and will recompense upon you all your abominations. This verse proclaims a side of the Lord, mostly denied, the side of judgment. However, if mercy is rejected, whether then or now, ultimately judgment must come. And my eyes, sh my eyes shall not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense your ways upon you, and your ab abominations shall be in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. If men will not repent... The Lord cannot spare or have pity. Thus says the Lord God, an evil and only evil, behold, is come. This evil refers to to the soon come to the soon to come Babylonian invasion. Only evil pertains to it being all judgment, with no mercy or pity. In other words, there will be not there will be, there will be no spite. The phrase behold is come refers to the truth that if the people repented, even though their souls would be saved, the city, the temple, and the land would not would not now be spared. Repentance at an earlier time would have avoided this, but this is now too late to save the city and the temple. An end is come, and the end is come. No watch is for you. Behold, it is come. The redemption guarantees a certitude of fulfillment. The morning is come unto you, O you who dwell in the land, the time has come, the day of trouble is near, and not and not the sounding of the mountains, again of the mountains. The verse means as the day begins, judgment is beginning. The prophet says, the time has come. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon you and accomplish my anger upon, upon you. And I will judge you according to your ways and will recompense you for all your abominations. This verse is similar to verse 3. Its repetition, as given by the Holy Spirit, only increases its severity. And my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense you according to your ways and abomina abominations that are at the midst of you. And you shall know that I am the Lord who smites. The Lord either touches to heal, as was evidence in Christ, who came not to condemn but to save, but if rejected, will smite, exactly as Jerusalem was um, smitten in A.D. 70. Behold the day. Behold it has come. The morning has gone forth. The rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. The phrase the rod has blossomed refers to Nebuchadnezzar, who was ready to strike. Pride has budded pertains to Israel's determined sin which demanded the rod and is unique here. It means proud lu lu uh, luxuriance. 
In other words, the blessings of God had been turned into license. Violence has risen up into the rod of a wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor any of the nor any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The violence goes to with the pride of verse ten. Wherever there is pride, there will be violence. As self-righteousness, um, men demand to have their way. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Refers to the fact that the violent injustice they destroyed and impoverished each other. As the nobles of Judea pra uh, practiced this rod of wickedness on the weak and helpless, the Lord then practiced it on them. The time has come. The day draws near. Let not the uh, no, not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn uh, <clears throat> mourn for wrath as upon all the multitude thereof. The idea is the conduct of the business, which had become all important to Judea, was soon to come to an end. This within itself was only the tip of the iceberg concerning the judgment that was coming. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold although they were not yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. The phrase, for the seller shall not return to that which is sold, refers to the false prophecies claiming the immediate restoration of the exiles. The sellers would not see their estate again, and though their children might, they were to be in Babylonia for some 70 years, at least from the time of the first de de uh, deportation, <coughs> which had about 50 years to run. They have blown the trumpet, even make all the way, all the ready. But none goes into the battle, for my wrath is upon the multitude thereof. They have blown the trumpet refers to the year of Jubilee, when lands that have been sold reverted to their original owner. The prediction here was that none of these sellers and buyers would live to see the next jubilee. In fact, the trumpet would be blown, but it would not be for jubilee, but rather for battle. The sword is without, and the pestilence and famine within. He who was in the field shall die with the sword, and he who was in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour them. The idea is that one cannot escape from the coming judgment, but they who escape of them shall escape. And shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. It is a law of God that one does not mourn for their sin. They will they will mourn because of their sin. All true repentance is born of a sense of sin against God. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. All this for fear of the Babylonians. <clears throat> they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall come, will cover them, and shame shall be upon all their faces, and baldness upon their heads. Gird themselves without sackcloth speaks of a last-minute effort to repent, but it will be too late. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be, be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block in their iniquity, of their iniquity. The stumbling block of their iniquity was their sin of making idols out of silver and gold, and the subsequent idolatry. They had traded Jehovah for a stupid-looking idol made of metal or wood. Consequently, they became like the idol they worshipped, dumb, stupid, senseless, and without spiritual intelligence. So, uh, such characterizes most of the present world. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set in it majesty, but they made the images of their abomination and of their uh, des uh, detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. As for the beauty of his ornament, <laughs> he set it in majesty, refers to the temple in Jerusalem. And their disdainable things therein refers to the Hebrew idolaters who sat upon the idols in the temple. And I will give it unto the hands of the strangers for prey, and to the wicked of the earth of, for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. This refers to the temple 
and all the ornaments given by the Chaldeans who were strangers to God. But my face will I turn also from thee, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into and defile it. My secret place pertains to the Holy of Holies, where resides the Ark of the Covenant, the Mercy Seat, and the Cherubim, and where God also resides. Where Jerusalem fell, he, uh, heathen Babylonians will come into this Holy of Holies. Make a chain. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. The words make a chain are a symbolic prediction for the captivity, just as the rod of wickedness foretold the invasion of verse 11. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp and the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. The worst of the heathen refer to the coming Babylonians, as it is if the whole as it as is it as if the Holy Spirit is saying of the religious leaders of Jerusalem, you desire to practice evil, therefore I will bring upon you those who are experts in this practice. Destruction comes and they shall seek peace, and they shall be and there shall be none. And they shall seek peace and there shall be none refers to overtures made to the Babylonian generals which were rejected. Mischief shall come upon all mischief, and rumor shall be upon all rumor, and they shall seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. And the and on the, and on the very eve of destruction, the people of Jerusalem would turn to the prophet, priests, and elders. But alas, there was there were there. But alas, these were corrupt. Consequently, no help would come from this source. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people sh uh, of the land shall be troubled. And I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them, and, I, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The king shall mourn probably refers to uh, Zedekiah. He rightly had something to mourn about, but he, but he also was a weak individual which which would have uh, extirpated his mental state and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled refers to all commerce political life and business down even to the day laborers everything would come to a grinding halt all right so that's verse 7 of Ezekiel and once again we are seeing the price to be paid when one rejects Jesus Christ over and over and over again. You can only reject for so long. You can only go the wrong way for so long before you're given what you really want. And you don't want that to happen. So when you know you're going wrong, come on back. Don't make it don't make it um going the wrong way a long time so god loves us he sent his only son to die for us because of what jesus did we have access to all the things of god and all we have to do to acquire is believe in his son and what he did for us to keep our faith there it's the faith that gets us saved it's the faith that keeps us saved and it's because of what he done, he has done that will get us into heaven. So thank you, Jesus. All right, God bless you, and God willing, I'll be with chapter eight um, the next day. God bless you.